Our next lecture is going to deal with brain tumors. You don't need to be an expert in how to treat brain tumors, but you do need to know some of the ways that they present. You need to know uh, some of the most common brain tumors, and you'll need to know when to refer out for imaging to make sure that your patient doesn't have a brain tumor, or if you're in emergent or urgent care, um, when to order emergent imaging. So this is kind of, we're gonna focus mostly on um, learning the different types of tumors, and we'll talk a little bit about treatment, and we've already talked about um, when it's important to get imaging studies, and we'll go into a little more depth on that as, during this lecture as well. So the incidence of brain tumors. The median age of diagnosis for all primary brain tumors is gonna be 57 years old, and your incidence of developing a brain tumor does increase with advancing age. Brain tumor is the second most common cancer, and it's the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths in children under 20. The lifetime chance of developing a primary CNS tumor is approximately one in 200, slightly higher in men than women. And it's a lot, there are many children in the US um, who are diagnosed every year with brain tumors. So 25, 2600 children younger than age 15 diagnosed every year with a primary brain tumor. The etiology of these tumors, um, the incidence of metastasis is about four times higher than that of a primary brain tumor. So when we get these tumors, we always want to look everywhere else to be sure that there's not another primary cancer. Um, the, the most common cancers that metastasize to the brain are going to be lung melanoma, renal cell carcinoma, breast cancer, and colorectal cancer. About 40% of primary central nervous system tumors are what we call gliomas. And as a group, these are tumors that include astrocytomas, oligodendrogliomas, ependymomas, and mixed gliomas. About 80% of malignant CNS tumors are going to be gliomas. Focal effects of the brain tumor in general is determined by the site and the size of tumor. So when we talked earlier in the course about localizing the lesion, this is one of those times when it's very, very important. So you do your very thorough physical exam, and if you have no idea what's going on, you don't worry about it until you're finished with your exam and you've documented all your abnormal findings, and then you have all the pieces to the jigsaw puzzle that you can put together and at that point determine what your location of the tumor is or, or localize that lesion. So there are a lot of symptoms that can occur as a result of tumors. Important to understand that seizures are a very common first symptom. About a third of cerebral tumors will present with seizures. We can also see hemiparesis, ataxia, weakness, just dependent on what kind of real estate the tumor is taking up in the brain. Generalized symptoms that may happen along with um, brain tumors are gonna be as a result of the increased intracranial pressure, things like headache, nausea, vomiting, altered mental status, alterations in higher brain functioning. And remember that headache is very rarely the first symptom of a tumor. And it's the posterior fossa tumors that most often present or cause headaches. So we're gonna do a careful neurologic exam to help localize the lesion. We've talked about that already. And consider contrast-enhanced CT or MRI depending on our clinical suspicion. And then very often we'll do an open craniotomy or an MRI or CT guided stereotactic biopsy. So there's a YouTube video here, a link to the YouTube video where you can watch um, a stereotactic biopsy. First, we're gonna look specifically at gliomas. Uh, as a group of tumors, gliomas are the most common primary brain tumors. And don't get confused because we're gonna talk a little bit later about the most common type of specific primary brain tumor, which is an A meningioma. But as a group, the gliomas are the most common brain tumor. Um, the glial cells in these tumors that make up these tumors are actually non-neuronal cells in the brain. And they're the cells that provide support and nutrition, um, homeostasis maintenance, uh, they form myelin and they participate in signal transmission, all within the nervous system. So they're the support system of, of the nervous system. 
and glioma is just a general term for any tumor that arises from glial cells. So we can get malignant transformation from an astrocyte, which is a uh, glial cell, and that can turn into an astrocytoma or a glioblastoma multiform. Um, ependymocytes are another type of glial cells that can malignantly transform into ependymomas. It's a lot of tongue twisters. I'm going to apologize in advance. I'm going to pronounce a lot of these wrong out of the gate. <laughs> and then oligodendrocytes can transform into oligodendrogliomas. If I was a better video editor, I could edit my mistakes out, but I'm uh, not that good at that. So looking now specifically at glioblastoma multiform, this is going to make up 50%, a little more than 50% of gliomas. Um, it's more common in males than females. Very difficult to remove completely because the borders are very ill-defined. Um, the slide here says octopus-like tentacles. I also like to think of it as um, a piece of gum that's sort of melted on the top of the brain and the, the drips of the gum have gone into the, the sulci and the and uh, invading the gyri, and it's, it's very hard to get all of that out. So the recurrence rate is very high um, and, and just arises from the tumor that's been left over after surgery. Uh, these tumors have a really poor prognos prognosis, a median survival of about 12 months, and that's with optimal treatment. So our treatment here is going to be surgery and radiation chemotherapy. I don't know how many of you remember uh, when Ted Kennedy collapsed and had a uh, generalized tonic-clonic convulsion. I believe he was at a luncheon or a political convention. I'm not exactly sure. This was back in May of 2008. And he was diagnosed after that seizure with GBM and died a year and, and change after that diagnosis. So my suspicion is he had access to the best treatments and the best physicians, but... Um, Despite that, he still did, did not live very long. There are some new studies right now coming out of Duke uh, where they are actually injecting a live polio virus into the tumor cells, and they have been studying this with glioblastomas. And um, the live polio vac vaccination actually works by breaking down the cell wall to allow our own immune system to penetrate and destroy the cancer cells. The cancer cells, the cancer cell wall is um, very difficult to penetrate and with this live virus sort of breaking down that barrier, our immune system is able to kind of kick in. So hopefully we're going to see that, um, that research coming and being utilized uh, more globally. It's, um, I believe there are about 25 hospitals nationally that are using Duke's protocol for uh, the polio virus. So interesting stuff on the horizon. Meningiomas. Um, meningiomas are going to arise from the meninges or the dura. They can occur anywhere in the brain or spinal cord. Um, they are, again, the most common primary brain tumor. They are very slow growing and they tend to compress rather than invade like the GBM does. 90% of these are benign. Uh, they most frequently occur in middle-aged women. And the treatment here is going to be surgical resection combined with post-operative radiation therapy. Interestingly, chemotherapy is not useful in the treatment of meningiomas. So here's a nice picture of a meningioma, and you can appreciate how this tumor would cause some symptoms of compression. The next tumor we're going to look at is a CNS lymphoma. This is about 3.1% of primary brain tumors. Um, about 10 to 30 percent of patients with systemic lymphoma will develop secondary CNS involvement. Um, incidence increases in this tumor in both immunocompromised and immunocompetent people. I'm sorry, this tumor, the incidence of this tumor is rising in, in all these populations. Um, Almost all CNS lymphomas are non-Hodgkin B-cell tumors. Very poor prognosis for these patients. Mean survival um, patients who are not infected with HIV is 18.9 months and only 2.6 months for patients who, are, um, who have developed 
full-blown AIDS. So we can see here a primary central nervous system lymphoma. And you can read here um, that they treated this patient with four cycles of high dose methotrexate and it did help to resolve the lesion. Childhood tumors. Uh, medulloblastoma is going to be the most common brain tumor, primary brain tumor in children 0 to 4. This, um, these tumors may present with headache alone, but most childhood headaches are not caused by tumors, just like adults. Um, but a headache that's associated with ataxia, limb ataxia, um, gait disturbance, which would be part of the ataxia picture, um, seizures, or cranial nerve palsies merit further investigation. So any children that present with a headache and any of those focal neurologic signs, they really need to be worked up completely. The medulloblastoma is going to be the most common brain, I already said this, the most common primary brain tumor in ages 0 to 4. They grow from the cerebellar vermis. Um, typically, they present with signs and symptoms of hydrocephalus um, because they, will, they obliterate the fourth ventricle. So a lot of times these patients, again, will have morning headache, nausea, vomiting, lethargy, and ataxia. They are very rapidly growing, and we treat these with surgery followed by radiation and chemotherapy. Um, prognosis is really variable, dependent on age at time of diagnosis, um, size and extent of the tumor, and how much the... Um, how much of the tumor was able to be resected in surgery. So here's a sagittal MRI of a six-year-old with a medulloblastoma. Um, you can see the contrast enhancing tumor here, and you can appreciate how that is um, obliterating the fourth ventricle and leading to hydrocephalus. Pleocytic astrocytomas are going to be the most common brain tumor in children age 5 to 19. They tend to arise in the cerebellum, and they are very slow-growing. They have very sharply defined borders, and because of that, they are often curable with surgery if they're not located in uh, prime real estate. So as long as they're accessible in the brain for surgery and the removal is not going to um, cause more impairment than the tumor is causing, they can be resected. Radiation or chemotherapy generally used to treat inaccessible tumors or tumors that are only partially removed. Here is a sagittal T1 MIA, I'm sorry, <laughs> MRI of a pleocytic astrocytoma. And note that this, these are in the posterior fossa, so these are one of those headaches that may present, or one of those tumors that may present with headache. Metastatic brain tumors, uh, cancers that most commonly metastasize to the brain. Uh, we, I gave you a laundry list in the beginning, but brain, lung and breast are at the top of that list. Uh, metastatic tumors reach the brain by way of um, by way of the blood. I apologize. Um, metastasis is usually going to be the same type cell type as the primary cancer. Typical radiologic features of brain metastasis in, con in uh, contrast to primary brain tumors is that they, there may be multiple lesions. Um, they typically have very well circumcised, circumscribed, good grief, <laughs> circumscribed borders, um, and they tend to be located at the gray-white matter junction. So you can see here a picture um, of metastases. There are several different lesions here. They're well defined. Um, and then just a reminder kind of what the gray white matter junction is and where those tend to occur from. When we treat these, usually we're treating with corticosteroids and radiation therapy, um, surgical resection in patients with a solitary tumor if a systemic malignancy is well controlled um, is an option. CNS metastasis other than small cell lung cancer usually don't respond to chemotherapy. Most common cause of death for these patients is going to be the progression of their primary tumor. And that's all you need to know about brain tumors.